Well, I, I did um, have quite a debate on Avalon, um, and uh, a number of people seem to be quite fixated with following the, the, the media's news. Um, there was a number of pictures showing um, uh, what a, a chain gun or a 20 millimeter or a 30 millimeter cannon shell from um, an American gun will do. Um, and I sort of tried to explain to somebody where you can't equate an American system with a Russian system. So uh, the pictures of crashed wreckage, you can't go and look at that, look at the damage on that and then try and equate it with an American weapon system. Uh, the plane that crashed um, was deliberately brought down uh, by the Russians for the right reasons. Now that's a horrible thing for somebody who has loved ones on their aeroplane because how can anything be for the right reason? But many people will say that a hundred had to die so that a million could be saved. And that's often the way that people justify, and I'm not saying it's right, but that's how they justify making decisions. And that was the thinking behind that particular brought right down of that, that plane. Um, well, the Ukraine's not a war. If you've, uh, if you've lost family or people have been killed, it is a war, but from a, a, a global situation, the Ukraine is not a war. The, glo the Ukraine is a power play between um, NATO, America, Europe, and Russia simply for leverage on the Soviet Union. There's no war going on there, not in the true sense of the word. Um, the, 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 the Gaza situation um, it's probably one of the first times actually in recent history that, that the Israelis have not had the support that they've enjoyed in the past. And that's actually quite important because it's beginning to, it, it forced them into having a peace, peace deal, uh, even though it may be very small. I find it quite difficult because I'm Jewish myself and I'm, I have a big, there's a big difference between Israel, the Jews and Zionism. Because if you actually were to go onto the streets of Israel, Jerusalem, you'd actually find that most Jews don't want a war. Most Jews actually want to live with the people next door in some form of peace and harmony. But the Zionist group, the group that, that pay for and organize Mossad, uh, they don't want that at all. So I always get very cross with people when they label Israel. It's not actually a country or a people. It's just like in America. It's a small group of people who've, who've got, got it by the scruff of the neck. And the situation in Gaza, um, from the world perspective, is the first time that the Israelis have had secret messages from the Americans saying you've gone too far. And so I can't talk about the humanity, humanitarian situation, that, that's not appropriate for here, but um, from our perspective, this is the first time the Israelis have had a check to their expansion policy. So that's actually good. They've got a real hard job to get it built by the back end of 2015 or at the earliest, the beginning of 2016. They have a real hard job to do that. Um, but it doesn't matter because the Japanese are paying for it all. Uh, so there's no cost to the Americans at all. Um, it's, they have had problems with the tunneling. Uh, some of the, the geology of the, the area is not as good as they thought it would be. Um, but they're, they're, they're doing very well. They're doing very well, so we'll see how they go with it. Oh, I wonder what my associates might be. Um, by by all certainty, <clears throat> natural genetic you know mutation does occur. That's part and parcel. I mean, if you are exposed to a very high level of radiation, whether that's solar radiation, then there will be some form of mutation, but whether that will be for good or for bad, um, that depends on the amount of radiation and, and the individual concerned. Um, we talked about Darwin earlier. Um, I think the best way to, to perhaps start the answer here is that if you look at um, how fashionable it is to breed dogs, to a lesser extent cats, and it's very interesting to get photographs that are 100 years old and see within 100 years how people have bred dogs to look completely differently. Now, 
Under natural selection, shall we use that word, a wolf is a wolf. A wolf is a wolf as it was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve thousand years ago. But humans, using uh, genetic ideas, um, can change an animal within a hundred years. So what I'm saying is when artificially some intelligence moves in and manipulates a creature within 100 years on this planet, a dog can be nothing like what it was 100 years before that. But left alone, they don't change. So a wolf has stayed a wolf a thousand years, but you've got the German Shepherd and all the range from it, which came not from natural, but because an an intelligence, which is man, came in and altered it. And within an incredibly short period of time, you have something which is very different. And that's what I mean by why Darwin's theory just doesn't work. Because a creature, once it reaches the epitome of its point, will stay at that point. A wolf survives. It's great. It's got what it needs. Why should it change? So it stays for thousands of years and only evolves very slowly. You get someone comes in, tinkers around, and within an incredibly short period of time, you get changed. And that's what happened with the human race. Um, you don't alter things with, with, with radiation. You do it literally by gene splicing. And that's what they've done. They've cloned animals here. Humans have done it. It's exactly the same. So uh, when you say my associates, anybody who's in the know knows it's the biggest joke. Darwin is the biggest joke. And it's part of the programming of humans so that when they go to school and they go to university and college they are programmed that uh, you can't control yourself it's all natural the survival of the fittest you haven't got the ability to create something of yourself or change yourself uh, and it's all dog eat dog and it's just another lie that people have fed You know, I've always been very careful because I don't want to upset people who are deeply religious. <clears throat> you, know, um, you know, you know, Moses going up and getting the Ten Commandments and stuff like that. Um, if I want to, if I was negative and I wanted to control a primitive species, I would need to set myself up as a god. I would need to um, do very much like Wizard of Oz. So I'd be behind the curtain, projecting my voice, sounding like to be huge when really I'm not that big at all. Um, and the same, the same entity did a bit of a tour and then went to, to the Aztecs and the Mayans. Um, and they have a very, very similar culture. Any culture that has sacrifice as part of its core belief will have come from a reptilian background. So in the Aztecs, they had what's called the obsidian knife. Uh, it was a, a knife so long, carved out a piece of volcanic glass, obsidian, which was plunged into the chests of those who were lucky enough to make it to the top of the altar and be stabbed to death. Um, in, in the Babylonian, uh, the Sumerian, and the Egyptian sacrifice. Think about when the pyramids were built, or the temples were built, all of the pharaohs, soldiers, staff, women, horses, animals were all placed and then the doors were open, sand was just poured on them and they suffocated to death. Sacrifice. Any human culture that has sacrifice has had interaction with reptilians. The other, the other thing I would just point out very briefly is that it's not just the white races that have this. There are a couple of black races that I'm aware of um, uh, and the Zulus uh, who um, were an interesting experiment because the reptilians find it very hard to dominate black people. The mind set of a black person uh, is very hard to control. White people is very easy. I don't understand why that is, but that's a fact. And that's why most abductees, contactees are white. That's, that's the reason for it. Um, but the, the Zulu race was a, an experiment in kind, and they have some very interesting rituals, uh, the washing of the spears. This is a very interesting uh, ritual that comes right back from reptilian times. After the Zulu warriors had gone in for a fight, had to wash their spears in the river, wash the blood away from them. And that's why they were such phenomenal fighters. Um, so there are a number of races uh, throughout the planet that have had different sorts of interaction depending on what the project was. So with the Zulus, it was to make a warlike race, to make them the, 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 the race of superiority on the African continent, and it nearly worked.
you know, I would I would expect those people to be fully earth human. Um, however, I would expect them to uh, have connections with their DNA memory, which allows them to have great knowledge of medicine, um, great knowledge of being able to open up communications to uh, creatures in other dimensions. Uh, so I would I would expect them to be fully earth human, but with access to uh, soul memory, which then gives them those those psychic abilities. Yeah, simply because it was the it was the French that gave nuclear technology to the Israelis. Um, uh, France and Israel were very very thick as thieves between. 1950 and 1960, and it was the French that gave nuclear power to, to them. Um, when a country can't be fully controlled and has a nuclear bomb, then it can always make threats. Um, if you don't do what we want, then we'll you know do this, that, and the other. However, um, it isn't about that. That that you know, the, Israel would never use that as a threat he doesn't need to. If Israel wants something, uh, it will just go and get it. It doesn't need to get permission from anyone because it sees itself as the chosen race. So it doesn't have the stranglehold. That's, that's, that's not, people are misunderstanding what they're seeing. What the, what the questioner is really asking is why does Israel get away with everything? Why is Israel getting away with stuff which other countries couldn't? And that's a better question, and the, and, and the better answer would be because the Israelis are in con connection with an a off-world group and have been for a very long time who advises them and is slightly different from the uh, alien group that advises the Americans. Um, and because Israel never broke the covenant that it had with these aliens a long, long time ago, they received very, very special protection. Um, and they are also a subset within the Illuminati. So in other words, the Zionism is the, at the very top of the pyramid, if I can use that term, um, the very, very top. So they are the government. They don't need to, to blackmail anybody because they tell people what they're going to do. If you think about the, the Twin Towers, which we're not here to talk about, but, but the, the, the Zionist group had a lot of contact with what was going on. Well, I, I, I did go into this in quite some detail. I mean, the, the important thing I think I will talk about is that everybody who's researched the subject knows that the first aeroplane, I think it was in March, the Malaysian aircraft that went down, had a group of scientists who were working on black stealth technology. And everybody knows that who's in the field. These were Chinese guys who were actually contracted to an American corporation to build stealth technology. And it's also reasonably well known in, in circles that the patent uh, was held by that group. And when they died or were lost, that patent fell to the other major shareholder, which was Jacob Rothschild. So Jacob Rothschild now has the patent to this uh, stealth technology. But you see, that's not the reason why the plane was brought down. That's an icing on the cake. When you're a bad guy and you're going to do something, and we'll talk about 9-11, when you're going to do something, you want as many gains out of a big situation as you can. So what they did was they stuffed this plane full of as many important people as they could. You just say to people, you're going on a conference. You get their, their corporation to tell them, you three are on a conference, it's a freebie. We're gonna pay you, it's gonna be lovely, off you go. There were another group of scientists which haven't been reported. And these were biogenetic scientists. And this is what the, this is what they're after. Now I don't know if you if you're aware, but the rebel commanders uh, at Ukraine found signs of torture on some of the bodies that were found. These are the genetic scientists that don't appear in any of the media, mass media. So these aren't the Chinese scientists who were on the uh, stealth technology. These are the bio scientists who were being tortured because they were. They were being pressured because the work they were doing was very close to uh, fruition and there were just a number of elements that were required. So you have to understand that the first aeroplane was brought down because they wanted these scientists. And the other thing that's really, really heartbreaking for people, I know that, is that they couldn't understand why their phones were ringing. 
you know, and there was all these stories of have they gone into a time portal? It's like the Bermuda Triangle, and you know, two days later their phones are ringing. Unfortunately, it's a very, very mundane reason for that. Is when you are traveling, if you have a modern 3G or 4G telephone, and you're traveling the world, every time you pass a main base station, it communicates with your phone, so that when people were ringing, they weren't ringing the phone. It was the last base station they went through. So it wasn't the phone that was ringing, it was just the, the base station that was activating that, that voicemail for them. Um, and the other key I'd say is that America was totally absent in its communication for days when that plane went down. They just kept right out of it. You know, of all the countries in the world who would know where that plane was, it would be the Americans, because the Americans were fully behind it with, um, you could call it a Zionist grouping, um, because they wanted information from these scientists and they didn't want anyone else to have those scientists. So, you know, there's, there's a lot to it that, that even people who are researching haven't actually dug out. The, 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 the casing had to be of material that didn't react with human skin because they didn't have you know, issues of people being allergic. So the material is <clears throat> the way it is. The, the tourmaline is actually held in the uh, sections of the wristband on the actual tops. There's a top bit there. Um, it also has some radioactive material in it, hence the radioactive sign on there. But people don't actually understand that. Uh, you need radiation to actually act with that. Um, depending on the sort of person you are and the sort of creature you are, you can withstand certain levels of radiation. And what radiation does, um, no doctor would agree with me by the way, what radiation does is it, 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 it mutates or changes your cell structure. And if you're attacked by a high energy beam weapon, you can actually almost put your cell structure out of phase with that weapon. So such a, such a, such a mineral or such a, an element um, uh, does more than just deflect or diffuse because the weapon is aimed at your skin and your body and you know when you put a dinner into a microwave it's actually cooking up the material so what you need to do is you need to protect the physical material so you have to do something to the physical material so when it's attacked in that way it doesn't cook up or heat up i mean i, I don't want to end up in any trouble here but uh, you know somebody gave me a, a, a something from a nuclear reactor not so long ago i have a piece from a, a nuclear reactor which i really shouldn't have been given but that was very useful. There are a number of people that um, I don't say they could survive on eating spent uh, rods of uh, uranium, but um, you know it's it's quite a useful material to have about you. So uh, no, uh, and the final part would be if you're into magic, you can literally use magic to imbue an item, um, which would have then certain elements or powers with that. So I would imagine that you would look at a range of something that reflects, deflects or diffuses, that uh, interacts with the physical biological being that it's attached to and um, you know um, basically can, can just alter or change. So yeah it's, it's what you do. It certainly will uh, reflect back some of those waves, absolutely. Um, the question is whether it can be absorbed into the bloodstream. If it can be absorbed into the body, um, then it will give uh, some protection. So I would say that's good. But I would warn that people mustn't exceed whatever is like the recommended amount. Because I can imagine people thinking, oh, I must have lots of this, lots of this. Um, so don't overdo it. But yeah, I can see their benefit in that. I would counsel people instead of uh, this is a present this, this is a present to me I didn't go out and seek it it was given to me and I accepted it as a present I think people should go out and look for good quality water make sure that they are now fluoridating water in bottles um, I went to my local supermarket I won't say what the name is and you know fortunately they still have to tell you so they are adding fluoride to water and that's another plan they want to do fluoride all drinking water so I say to people don't worry about devices find quality food, quality drinking water, 
and if you've got enough a patch of land pull out your rose bushes and start growing crops start looking after yourself because there is going to be a period of disruption in either 2015 or 2016 and if you've got 10 pounds of spuds in your cupboard under your stairs which can last three months that might be much better than any device to deflect a scala wave there are some very very gifted um, inventors just ordinary guys and women who have an electronics background and could quite easily build a device that could throw a shield uh, maybe three foot four foot around um, so it is perfectly conceivable that there are devices that are electrically powered that can disrupt uh, those, those points what I would try and make clear is that people don't understand the, the point about microwaves digital and and phones isn't because you know it's going to kill the population that's not why we were given you know mobile phones it was because the network of all this communication whether it's wi-fi or whatever it is that is where they are encoding signals and sending it so you know it's not we'll all die of cancer because we will be baked with microwaves that was never the intention the intention is that this is a network uh, that covers the globe in which you can send encoded messages that will uh, slowly but surely brainwash people. So that's what it's all about. That's why in Britain we were forced to go from analog to digital in a very short period of time because you cannot uh, use an analog wave to carry the depth of information uh, to mind control people. You need it to be hidden in digital in the digital wave. You know yourself with your experience how an analog wave is in compared to a digital wave. Um, so it's not about frying people, it's about controlling them. Yes, uh, my take on transhumanism is, is perhaps somewhat different from other people. Um, uh, there are a number of, in Britain in particular, a number of um, very well established, old established um, organizations that are centrally funded that have been uh, working hand in hand with America and it comes largely from the Nazi experiences, the Nazi technology uh, to create and change. Um, sometimes you know when you give a, a scientist a brief he or she will go off on five or six different tangents and sometimes you end up with a tangent that wasn't actually what you gave them the brief for, but that's the one that, that's interesting. Uh, and it does interest me because it comes back to the greys, because some of the greys are robotic um, and were originally very human uh, and were I say, bred out of them. That's probably a very harsh word. But it's a negative agenda. Uh, it's an agenda that has been hijacked um, and there's plenty of money being pumped into it. So it's something that um, there's a lot of pain associated with their experiments that have reached them to the point that they're at now. No, <laughs> um, I have a psychic ability, which means that I can um, uh, have communications and give communications psychically. Uh, but only to those who are also psychically aware. Um, I remember one interesting case where um, something I'd been attacked psychically by mistake by American military. And that's American because you know it was an American guy. Um, and when he realised that he'd been attacking the wrong person, uh, it was very interesting because he said um, um, he didn't say what punishment should I undergo. He said. Um, uh, almost like what sacrifice should I undergo uh, because it's very reptilian so when someone does something wrong uh, in order to even the books they then have to atone for that error and then you have to tell them what that punishment will be um, so in terms of that psychic ability um, can communicate with a, a range of creatures but you don't have to be locked into the net um, there are some children now being born and who are around about the 12, 13, 14, 15 age range, perhaps some of them are now 20, 21, who naturally have that and you don't have to be plugged into a net. What some people do 
is they connect with the Earth's own consciousness. So that the planet has its own consciousness. And if you are a child of the Earth, then you can connect and use it to piggyback. You can actually use the Earth as a carrier wave, for want of a better word. And then you can psychically transmit or it boosts your own energy, depending on where you are. That's why people will go to a stone circle or a very uh, hollow, pla uh, hallowed place where there's a, a node of energy or a portal, so they can be boosted. Um, and that's why people use crystals. Uh, it isn't a new age joke. Crystals really do uh, enhance uh, and activate a person's psyche, depending if it's the right crystal and it's pure enough. So no, uh, I am a standalone individual who has the ability to do what everybody should do if they'd only wake up to it. Um, artificial, did you say artificial intelligence? Um, no, um, that, I don't know if the questioner actually, I don't know if my understanding of his or her rendition of artificial intelligence is the same, so probably just leave that. Um, Yes, but it's not, it's not a, a well understood route. So in other words, it isn't like every Monday morning I'll speak to the White House, anything nonsense like that. It's only be ab absolute necessity and generally speaking, um, they won't simply because it's a two way thing. If you open a communication, you can check back the channel. I mean, I've remote viewed uh, certain places uh, on earth that are, are military sensitive um, and it didn't go down very well. So it, 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 the agreement is that we'll leave you alone if you leave us alone in terms of doing that sort of stuff. 